18 girls in a small town. They're all gonna get pregnant together. Become the center of a teenage pregnancy scandal. It will shock an entire nation. Uh, yep. It's one of those movies. Oh my god. I'm gonna have a baby. <laughs> <laughs> this is so bad. One of my favourite types of media to review are movies that try to explore a social issue or put forward a moral message, but are so inaccurate, ham-fisted or ridiculous that they end up being comedy gold. And some of the best examples in this category come courtesy of the American cable network, Lifetime. I've previously covered Cyber Seduction, the so bad it's good botched cautionary tale of how staring at pixelated boobies on the internet will ruin your son's life, and why being an overbearing privacy invading mother is completely justified. And now I've found another worthy entry, and amazingly, it might actually be even worse. 2010's The Pregnancy Pact is another one of Lifetime's scaremongering hit pieces, guaranteed to send chills up the spines of all the alcoholic suburban Karens who eat this shit up. It purports to tell the story of a fictional pregnancy pact in which several teenage girls pledge to get pregnant at the same time, inspired by a real-life pregnancy pact that allegedly occurred in Gloucester, Massachusetts and made national news two years prior. It's as melodramatic, sensationalising and absurd as you'd expect, and it treats its subject matter with about as much nuance and realism as Lifetime is capable of. There's a lot of ingredients in this sandwich. First off, in reality, there was no pregnancy pact. 18 girls did get pregnant within the same year, which is a lot, but there was no agreement between them, and in fact most of them weren't even friends. But their school principal and the media concocted a story about a prearranged pact and it blew up from there. And while the film does admit that the pact it portrays is fictional, it seems like they're trying to have it both ways. Adding in just enough reference to real events to scare its pearl-clutching audience and stoke the flames of a moral panic that their innocent daughters could be off conspiring to make their egos prego, despite this being nothing more than a paranoid fantasy. And disclaimers aside, both the film's trailers present it as an exploration of real events. What began as a secret You can't tell anyone Became a story that divided a town My magazine is saying that girls in your school made a pact to become pregnant Lifetime presents a movie What were you thinking? We had to dress them up in cute little matching outfits That uncovers the mystery behind their motive Did you want to get pregnant? No mystery is uncovered by the way, spoiler even more egregiously, characters in the film repeatedly state that teen pregnancies were at an all-time high, which is completely false. The rate of teen pregnancy was never as high as the film states, and had in fact been falling since the 90s and has continued to decline since. But let's not let the truth get in the way of a good scare. Not even the truth about pregnancy, which is depicted with appalling inaccuracy. This movie pregnancy is a straightforward process from conception to completion, and any physical complications that can arise from it are almost entirely ignored or hand-waved away. Even girls who are so heavily pregnant that they're ready to explode are surprisingly nimble on their feet, and no one complains about tiredness, soreness, nausea, back pain, acne, mood swings, or any of the number of other potential side effects of being a human incubator. So despite it being in the f***ing title, they couldn't even get that right. And this is rather strange considering the audience it's addressing. You'd think they'd want to go all in on the fear factor. But I guess they didn't have enough spine to talk shit about pregnancy to an audience of mothers. But pregnancy is written entirely to serve the story. And I've never seen an example of where biology is so badly warped for the purpose of plot convenience. With girls getting pregnant and showing signs whenever they need to drive the story forward, regardless of how little sense it makes or how much it f***s up the timeline. And there's even some fetal growth rates so exponential you'd otherwise only find them in Chernobyl. Things don't get any better when the film looks at teen pregnancy specifically. Teenage girls get pregnant for all kinds of reasons, but this extremely complex issue is reduced to the level of sophistication of a turd made of Play-Doh. The most I could gather is that one girl got pregnant by accident and then the others agreed to a pact because they thought it was cool? With one exception, their motivations are not explored, and they have no agency, personality, or ambitions beyond I want to have a baby and be like Britney Spears' little sister, and we can dress them up in matching outfits and paint their nails and have playdates together, it's going to be totally fetch. You think I'm joking? I hope we all have girls. Oh my god, that would be so cool. <laughs> Having a little girl to hang out with and be my best friend. And we'd get little matching outfits, and I'd paint her fingernails. I was so stressed about college apps and getting financial aid. But now I can just take a year off and play with the baby. We get to dress them up in cute little matching outfits and bring them here to the park and play together. I'm going to cook them dinner every night. 
So this is what it feels like to be Jamie Lynn Spears. The pregnant girls are universally portrayed as either idiotic, delusional, grossly irresponsible, or downright manipulative. Like holy sh** is this insulting? And while the boys who knock them up are given a slap on the wrist, the film places the overwhelming majority of the responsibility and blame on the girls themselves. Seemingly forgetting that you gotta have some sperm to get the job done, and that knowing how many girls were getting up the duff, these boys were still too f***ing stupid to wear a condom or just ask for a handjob. Not a single character in this movie is likeable or sympathetic. There's nobody to root for. Everyone is an asshole in some way. At least with the paranoid mother in cyber seduction, I could understand where her worries came from, even if I didn't agree with her. But her equivalent in this movie, the family values abstinence pushing mother of one of the pregnant girls, is so willfully blind to what's happening around her that her arguments have no weight and she's turned into an unbelievable caricature. The proponents for safe sex aren't treated any better, making wildly inaccurate statements and being guilty of hypocrisy and a lot of questionable conduct. And the news reporters are depicted as acting like the worst form of tabloid vultures, a condemnation which is hypocritical considering the film is also exaggerating and sensationalising these events for the sake of views and money. All this means that the issues and debates surrounding teen pregnancy are presented very simplistically, explored only at a surface level and reaching no real conclusions or solutions beyond saying, it's complicated. Well no sh** it's complicated. You could have just farted that repeatedly for an hour and a half and it would have been less migraine inducing than what we got. I'm only slightly exaggerating because I found the pregnancy pack to be a very disorienting and frustrating experience to struggle through. Not only is the film confused about what it wants to say and how it wants to say it, but because of the way pregnancy is essentially manipulated to fulfil story needs, the timeline of events makes no sense and is extremely difficult to follow. This is made worse by some truly terrible editing and scene structuring, jumping between locations and characters without regard for how much this disrupts the flow of the narrative. All these elements mix together to create a concoction that manages to be equal parts side-splittingly laughable and aneurysm-inducingly awful. But before we explore it further, it's sponsor time. We all know that wired earbuds can have their... issues. But suffer no more with the everyday E25 wireless earbuds from Raycon. I've been playing around with them for about a week now, and I'm honestly impressed. They're quick and easy to set up with Bluetooth, and offer 6 hours of battery life, added bass for some extra kick, and a slick, discreet design that fits snugly in your ears. I've even headbanged with these bad boys, and they've still stayed in. Ow. <laughs> I especially appreciate the surprisingly high amount of noise isolation they offer, because when I'm in the zone, I don't want anything bothering me. Overall, they really make my frequent listening to music or audiobooks on the go much more convenient and satisfying. All this, and they're only half the price of competing products of equal quality. Even better yet, as a fan of my channel, you can get a special code that'll give you an extra 15% off your first order. You want the code? Well, you can't have it unless you go to buyraycon.com slash cynical reviews. So click the link in the video description to go to buyraycon.com slash cynical reviews, help support the channel, and get yourself the quality earbuds you know you deserve. So thanks to Raycon for sponsoring this video, and now let's get stuck into this garbage heap. After opening with some clips of the real-life news coverage of the events, we're taken to our setting of Gloucester, Massachusetts. Although you won't hear any Massachusetts accents because this was filmed in Louisiana. Gotta get those tax breaks! And immediately we're greeted with multiple shots of horny teenagers kissing in the high school. Because one thing always leads to another, am I right parents? Carissa, one of the girls in the pact, goes to the school nurse for a pregnancy test, which comes back negative, and the nurse just lets her walk away even when the girl looks quite obviously disappointed. We cut to another one of the film's main characters, played by Thora Birch. Yeah, Thora Birch, the empress from the infamous Dungeons and Dragons movie I covered. That blew my mind a little. It had been ten years since that movie, and it really shows how far her career went down the crapper. She manages to bring slightly more emotion to this role, though that's not saying much. That face sums up her character's entire personality. She runs a blog exploring teen issues. Bear in mind that this is set in 2008, and she's supposedly able to make a full-time living and afford her own office and assistant off of a blog? I'm gonna have to call bullshit. So, we have two big stories in the news today. One, a woman running for president just picked up a big state in the primary. Oh. Saying this age like milk doesn't quite cut it. She sees that her old high school in Gloucester is in the news for its high number of teen pregnancies, and then an indeterminate amount of time later decides to go there to blog about the issue and find out why it's happening. 
You wanna come? No. That's the most intelligent line of dialogue in the script. Back in Gloucester, we're introduced to Sarah, another one of the girls in the pact. Her mum owns a restaurant and is the head of the local family values council. I always made sure my girls were at home every night, 8 o'clock. You and Michael have a curfew for Sarah, I'm sure. They make me be home by 9.30, and I'm 15. Carol Radaz's daughter had a midnight curfew. Now she's asking the council for baby clothes. That's right, mums. If your daughter's not home when the sun goes down, she's probably going down on some sun. You see what I did there? Huh? Right on cue, Carissa goes back to the nurse, and this time the test is positive. The girls get way too excited about the prospect of another sproglet in the brood before returning to families as broken as their hymens. Sarah's mum is loudly insisting in front page news articles that teen pregnancy and contraception are private issues that have nothing to do with the school. The nurse protests to the principal and assistant principal, but the former refuses to hand out contraceptives, and thinks that because girls are trying to get pregnant, it wouldn't make a difference anyway. But couldn't you at least give them out to the boys? Looks like Moretti's got a stalker. I hope that she has more friends that want to get knocked up. Oh, right. Never mind. After a few more scenes, Blogger finally arrives. After how much time? F knows. But she's vlogging while she's driving, like the responsible adult she is. She visits the mum's restaurant and tells her about her blog, as if this woman even knows what a blog is. The mum repeats her view that the media shouldn't get involved because it's a private matter between the girl and her family. Because the families of the girls have done such a good job up to this point. While gloating about how great it is to be a mother and completely ignoring the downsides, the girls talk about how unreliable men are. That's what guys do, they leave. This conversation worries Sarah, so she decides to get pregnant in order to trap her boyfriend Jesse into marrying her and staying in the town with her forever. I love you. We're gonna be so happy. Well, this got dark real quick. God damn. So they bang. Seemingly only once, so he must have had some Olympic swimmers stewing down there. I swear to God. No one tells Jesse I made this happen. He can't know. Uh, what? He's gonna work it out eventually. Would you rather he thought you'd f somebody else? What's your game plan here? Blogger goes to the school to try to interview the staff and bumps into the assistant. And it's awkward as f You're doing a, a story on teen pregnancy. Y you. It's pretty impactful on a kid's life, don't you think? Wow, that was subtle. Do you think it might be foreshadowing? Then the nurse and the mum have a debate about birth control in front of the school council, a farce which doesn't do justice to either side of the issue. We're dealing with teen pregnancy in our public schools after the fact. Why can't we just prevent it before the but fact? But we are. We are preventing it before the fact with abstinence programs. But that's so blatantly untrue, given how many girls are getting pregnant. But she's like, no contraceptives, let's just set standards for our kids to follow. So of course, she later turns out to be a hypocrite. What a shock. The school council rejects the nurse's motion to provide contraceptives, so she resigns in protest. And then she disappears from the film. She doesn't even try to help the girls in some other capacity or raise awareness about teen pregnancy. <laughs> anything? That's one of the top billed actresses gone after 20 minutes. Maybe that was all they could afford. One of the guys Carissa banged finds out he might be the father of her baby and calls her a freak. He wasn't meant to find out since the girls weren't supposed to tell anyone. Didn't stop them loudly talking about it in the hallways. The smell of onions conveniently triggers Sarah to vomit, thus revealing her condition. Her dad drags her round to Jesse's house and spills the beans about her being pregnant to Jesse and his lawyer dad. All he's missing is a shotgun. Jesse's also pretty pissed about her being pregnant, thinking that it's going to ruin both their lives. I should have pulled out every time or figured out how to get condoms without anyone knowing. Or you could have just not f***ed her if you didn't have a condom. That was also an option. The girls get interviewed by Blogger and act like morons, talking about how great it's going to be and relishing their five minutes of fame. Blogger then interviews Sarah. Are you sexually active? There's no way that's appropriate to ask, especially when she's on camera and when her mother's not there. And this is on school grounds. It's heavily implied that no one wants to talk to her, so it's extremely unlikely she got permission to do this. There's no way this is okay. But during the course of this interview, Blogger finds out Sarah is pregnant. I already love her so much, but nobody else does. And I don't know why. Because your parents are struggling financially, your conservative mother is now humiliated, and you've put your boyfriend's future in jeopardy. And because it's not their baby. Today, I put faces to the disturbing fact that one in six girls in the United States will actually have a child before she's the age of 20. Again, this is bullshit. 
The screenwriters pulled this number out of their arses. Also, how is she allowed to post this stuff that she filmed without permission on school property and featuring minors on the internet with no repercussions? She again tries to interview the staff, but the assistant refuses to see her because the superintendent told them via email not to speak to the press. So she barges into his office to admonish him, and he points out how much of a hypocrite she's being by using the girls for her blog, thus giving them the attention they so desperately crave. A couple of scenes later, the principal gets told to check for the superintendent's email, but completely ignores this and all of his common sense when a reporter from Time magazine shows up. Suppose I could spare some time for time? <laughs> Alright mate, calm down, your bone is showing. Meanwhile, Sarah and Jessie grow more distant, and her relationship with her parents becomes more strained. You're nice to other girls who get pregnant. The council gives them all kinds of stuff. Why can't you be nice to me? Because you knew better. Why does that make a difference to whether or not you're willing to help her? What the fuck? The girls get interviewed by Blogger again, having another opportunity to show off their stupidity, bragging about drinking while pregnant, and saying that they know what motherhood will be like because they have younger siblings. Because that's totally the same thing. Everyone's acting like we're too young to have a kid, but in the old days, girls our age always had kids, so it can't be that bad. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, it was fine when they weren't dying in childbirth. I mean, Mary, the mother of Jesus, was only 14, right? Bless Viva! Another girl wants to buy condoms, but is too embarrassed, so Blogger goes in to buy them for her. Don't condoms usually come in a box? Who sells them like that? Also, is it just me, or is it not inappropriate for her to be buying her condoms? Yeah. Well, everyone my age is doing it. <laughs> not everyone. In fact, not even most everyone. Pretty sure half of them are lying about it. What? Why'd you point to them when you said that? What's that supposed to mean? Sarah and Jesse find time to hang out again. He wants to go to college and play baseball, but she wants him to stay here with her. So she's basically trying to emotionally blackmail him into giving up his hopes and dreams. At a meeting of the Family Values Committee, Blogger points out how ridiculous it is for them to want to raise $13,000 for a single slot at the school's daycare, when they could hand out condoms for about $2, but refuse to do so. Which is a fair enough point. Sarah is very lucky to have you to help her and her baby, but not all young girls have that kind of... And you ruined it. Blogger meets the assistant at a coffee shop. Turns out she got pregnant at 16 and got rid of their baby, something he's still unhappy with. So he makes it all about him and how she doesn't feel what he wants her to feel. Hey, if we had gotten married, you know, we'd be divorced by now. Or deliriously happy, one or the other. Dude, you have a beautiful wife and two kids. You really shouldn't be saying this. I'm trying to help these girls. I'm trying to help so that maybe not so many of them have to go through what I did. You didn't have to go through with what you did. Yeah, because raising a kid as a 16-year-old is such an easy option. But honestly, they're both assholes, and the argument ends accordingly. Have you seen the Time Magazine story? That's not Time Magazine. Did they not want to buy the rights or something? So the principal told the Time journalist that there was a pregnancy pact, and the stories now received national attention. That was quick. The media's already there, harassing the girls for a news story. Hey, you guys, leave them alone! These girls are minor! Did we just get a video of her stomach? Oh, nice. Just... Yeah, that is creepy as f***, but were they not minors when you interviewed them? Blogger confronts the girls, who reveal the truth. You can't tell anyone. You can't tell. Yeah, we wouldn't want this story making national news or anything. Jesse is suspicious that Sarah was part of the pact and got pregnant on purpose, but she lies to him and tells him it was an accident. They then use footage of the real-life mayor insisting that they have not been able to confirm the existence of a pregnancy pact, and that the principal's memory was foggy as to who told him about it. The fictional principal later tries to have it both ways, giving a press conference where he says that he believes that what he said about the pregnancy pact was accurate, and passes the buck to the mayor, but then at the end refuses to say whether there was a pact or not. He never reveals who told him about the pact, and we never find out. So as far as we know, he just made it up, which is what actually happened, but the way it's presented here, it's like the film is throwing the mayor under the bus. If I were her, I'd have been pissed. Meanwhile, Sarah goes with her mum to get an ultrasound, which she then shows to Jesse. There's his little head, and its little arms, and... No, 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 no. She's been pregnant for, at most, a couple of months, so it makes no sense that the fetus is that large and developed. This is like that freak baby from Twilight. Oh, and that bump she's possibly starting to show there? It's gone in the next scene, of course. Some asshole reporter trespasses on Sarah's family's land to try to interview them, and things get physical when Jesse and Dad tell him to f*** off, and they both get arrested. Why did you girls do what you did? I mean, why did you... 
want to get pregnant. If you want to finish high school, go to college, start a career. None of that stuff matters to me. All I need to make me happy is marry Jesse and have a kid. Which would be fine if any of the other teen moms were portrayed as having some ambition. But Sarah, you're such a bright girl, is- No she isn't. At what point has she demonstrated that she's intelligent, either to you or anyone else? At this point they find out that Rose, the ringleader of the pact, has given birth. She had to have 37 stitches down there because she tore badly. This is the first time they seriously show the potential physical consequences of a pregnancy without merely dropping it into conversation. John, is the baby okay? I guess. Put her on an incubator thing. Like, on top of the incubator? And it's a bit weird that she's been left to recover in a part of the hospital that's this open. And why are non-relatives permitted to visit? Why are Blogger and the girls even being allowed in there? Sarah looks in on Rose's baby, which is very blatantly stock footage. They weren't even trying, were they? Blogger tries to convince Sarah to come clean about the pact because she thinks it's unfair that the principal is taking the fall for all the controversy. Which is stupid because this media circus is entirely his fault and Sarah admitting to a pact would just make the situation even worse. And then you can come out and safely say that yes, there was a pact and then maybe we can move- Oh no! Another plot contrivance! If that's where his car was, surely he would have seen them when he got out to go to the restaurant to look for her? <laughs> what?! Carissa's mum, who is deeply unhappy at her daughter following in her footsteps and until this point was almost approaching being a reasonable character, now has no problem dropping her pregnant daughter off at a party that is very obviously full of other pregnant girls drinking. Maybe she's hoping her daughter's problem will be taken care of, if you catch my drift. No one here looks to be of legal drinking age, except maybe this guy who's on his seventh repeat of freshman year, and this guy who looks like he's here to pick up freshmen. This is happening in broad daylight, and none of the adults are doing anything about it? Where are the cops? Why aren't those news crews reporting on this? What the f*** is this script? And you really don't need to be that well educated to know that drinking alcohol is bad for expectant mothers, so why aren't any of them objecting? This movie makes teenagers look horrendous. Sarah's parents, now knowing about the pact, give her a dose of reality, pointing out how bad her actions were, and she responds like the whiny, self-absorbed brat that she is, and storms out to find Jesse. When she does, he publicly berates her for lying to him. I only did it because I love you. Yeesh, that's some bunny boiler level sh**. Really thought we'd be together forever. I really did, but you ruined it. It is all ruined because of you. I'll repeat, it takes two to tango, dude. You're the one that f***ed her without a condom when you could have settled for a blowy. And then she takes a swig from a bottle of liquor, and again, nobody does anything about it. Blogger goes to Sarah's house to apologise to her and runs into the mum as she's leaving, presumably for work. They have a mudslinging argument that doesn't go anywhere, as Blogger is still ham-fisted in how she goes about asking questions, and the mum just buries her head in the sand. And then she goes back in the house. I guess she didn't need to go to work after all. Blogger then does another vlog where she tells the story of how she fell in love at 16, didn't want to wait, and ended up getting pregnant. She lied to her boyfriend, the assistant, telling him that she'd had an abortion. Then she lied again and said the father was unknown and gave the baby up for adoption. Not that she's ever apologised to him for all those lies. The drunk girls somehow manage to drive themselves to the mum's restaurant and Sarah has passed out in the back seat. She gets taken to a hospital and is lucky to still have the fetus given that she nearly drank herself into a coma. Sarah realises how badly she f***ed up and her mum confesses that she and her dad didn't wait until marriage to bone despite everything she now preaches. I would never have guessed that was coming. The assistant goes to meet Blogger again and they do actually realise that they've both been stupid and achieve some closure before they say goodbye, so that's nice. On a less pleasant note, Rose is having problems bonding with her baby who refuses to breastfeed. Finally, we're shown that babies aren't all glitter and sunshine. Don't yell at the baby. It's not your fault you don't know what you're doing. Remember teens, if you're a bad mother, it's all your fault. We need to find a better way to get our abstinence before marriage message across. Okay, that makes sense, but then she says... Birth control may not be a choice that I would accept in my home, but can't stand in the way of schools offering contraception for the families that want them. 
But surely that contradicts your abstinence message, and it still doesn't solve the problem of kids actually wanting to get pregnant, like your own daughter, remember? Blogger tells Sarah that she spoke up in defense of her mom, having learned that teen pregnancy is complicated. What a character arc. But neither of them have proposed any solutions. During the ending, we're shown that the principal has resigned, claiming he was scapegoated by the mayor, even though he's the one who made up the pregnancy pack story and brought all the media attention in the first place. The shitty families are still shitty, and Jesse has definitively left Sarah and moved on, while Sarah has decided to keep her baby. What we need to do now is have a real conversation about how to help young women make more informed choices for themselves, and how to help them succeed as mothers if their choice is to have the child. But you shouldn't be encouraging their choice to have a baby at 15. That's the point, isn't it? Isn't it? What is this film trying to say? The thing is, pregnancy, especially teen pregnancy, is very complicated. Every pregnant woman experiences it differently, and its impact and implications vary widely. That's why it's difficult to portray these issues accurately and profoundly. The Pregnancy Pact had the opportunity to do that, but not only failed miserably, but it feels like they barely even tried, only paying lip service to the task, instead resorting to melodrama and scaremongering nonsense while offering no meaningful messages or concrete solutions. This movie is an insult to everything it involves. It's an insult to mothers, pregnant girls, teenagers, adults, any and all commentators on teen pregnancy and sexuality, and even to its own audience. Because even they can't be stupid enough to fall for this tripe. If you want a film that explores teen pregnancy with far more subtlety and sensitivity, check out Juno instead. It's hardly perfect, but at least it won't make you want to punch yourself in the uterus. And to all the Karens of the world, if you want to stop your teen daughter from wanting to get pregnant, don't subject them to this garbage. Just buy them Animal Crossing, they'll never leave the house again. But these girls feel a sense of purpose being pregnant. And what are they supposed to do about it now anyway? Get that fetus, kill that fetus, get that fetus, kill that fetus, Thanks for watching folks, and do consider checking out the offer from Raycon. It is a great product, and they've been great to me as a creator, plus you'll be helping the channel out. Links down below. Once again, I've got to give a shout out to my lovely supporters on Patreon. If you like what I'm doing here and want to support the channel more directly, consider becoming a patron yourself. Subscribe for future content, follow me on my social media if you want to stay up to date, and join my public Discord server if you want to hang out. Links all below. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.